Welcome to Community Corner on 94.5 Praise, a program where we discuss the topics affecting the low country, but also programs and organizations making positive changes in our community. Today, we are blessed again to have uh, members from the National Park Services to um, come and be on Community Corner and share with us some of the things that are happening uh, uh, pertaining to the National Monument. Reconstruction <laughs> Monument era. We have today uh, Mr. Mike Allen, who is returning. He is a, a community partnership uh, specialist. And in addition to that, we have the acting superintendent of uh, Reconstruction era and the National Monument in the person of Miss Melissa English uh, Rice. Did I get that right, ma'am? Yes, you did. Thank you. Uh, it, we welcome you both to Community Corner. Uh, tell us, if you will, um, again, what you are here for and what you are looking to do in the future. Well, you know, again, um, we, we thank 94.5 for having us and hosting us um, today. Uh, both Melissa and I are, are very pleased and honored to to be a part of the team that's working to to bring Reconstruction Era National Monument to life. As many of you all know, on the afternoon of January the 12th, earlier this year, uh, President Obama signed an executive order which established Reconstruction Era National Monument here in Beaufort County, encompassing um, uh, Darrell Hall and property at the Penn Center, uh, having a partnership through a preservation easement with Brick Baptist Church, um, the receiving by donation uh, from the mayor of Buford and his brother, the old fire station in downtown Buford, and also to a collaborative effort with the U.S. Navy uh, properties on the Naval Hospital Complex, which was once um, known as Smith Plantation. And those are the physical areas, but 15 and a half acres, which encompasses our uh, Reconstruction Era National Monument. So we're here today just to kind of give you an update as to where we are, where we're moving, but most especially to let the public know that we are excited, that you were excited it's true. that we were established here. And we want to always, when we have the opportunity, um, Pastor, to be able to come and share our forward progress. We are excited. We are absolutely excited. And we are looking forward to all that is going to happen uh, here, especially in Beaufort County, but other places as well uh, pertaining to reconstruction. And so, uh, uh, Miss uh, Melissa, yes. it is great to have you in Beaufort. And so tell us, if you will, um, uh, what your thoughts are and where we are going with all of this. Thank you, Pastor. Well, one, the National Park Service, as Michael said, we are so excited to be here. We're so excited for this addition to not only the National Park Service, but to the Southeast region of the National Park Service. This is our 70th park. And also, we're here to tell the story that's kind of missing in American history, um, which is the Reconstruction era. So Michael and my job now is to get the baby growing. And um, our job is going to be um, starting the foundation for the park. And that is actually called the foundation document. And with public support again and public input and our partners, we're going to have a series of public interest meetings where we discuss the um, significance of the park, the period of significance and the resources and the stories that will go along with that and to develop interpretive themes will be part of the interpretive program that we present to the public about the sites. So you are going to actually go back into the community uh, hold public meetings uh, that is correct. and, correct. and uh, get some input, uh, show and give us what your ideas are. Well, we want also your ideas. It's public input on the stories because even though we know the larger stories, there are probably some more stories that we haven't had. So it's to get the public input on the period of significance, the purpose of the park, and the, the big thing is the period of significance, the period that we're going to focus on this reconstruction. And I story. think what that does any person living here in the Beaufort County area, someone asked, well, what is Reconstruction Era National Monument? What's it doing? What's its goals? What's its objectives? What's the future? They can speak with intelligence. So I, I echo what Melissa said. It's so important that the public be a part of this. Right now, we're looking at the last week in the month of July to have this conversation, if you will. Um, uh, we're looking at scheduling one of the nights of 
meetings uh, probably at the Penn Center on St. Helena Island, uh, a second meeting here in downtown Buford at Tabernacle Baptist Church, and then a third meeting as well uh, at probably some facility in Port Royal. And so we don't want anyone to be left out in this conversation and to be able to have a voice in this forward progress. Those three uh, places that you mentioned are very significant places here in Buford, and I think they are uh, virtually no one in Buford who do not recognize those three areas, and so that is a huge start, uh, uh, really, toward accomplishing your goal, if you will. Uh, you talked about um, how do we get the baby uh, going? Yes. Uh, so how do we get the baby going outside of the the meetings that we are going to have? Well, what we're doing now, we're here in the community. We're working with our part partners to get memorandums of understanding so we can operate um, the facilities. Also, we're working to help with uh, grants. We're up working to you know educate ourselves as well as the public on the reconstruction era. So the process is beginning now. That's why we're here. On, we're on the front doing these interviews um, to let people know that the park is here. Um, the support that we need and support that we hope that the National Park Service can do for the community too. So we hope so everything can be a win-win situation for everyone. You know, um, within about two three weeks from now, the Gullah Festival Correct. will be taking place, and this year the theme is reconstruction. And so we're honored that they looked at our presence here and determined that would be their theme. And so we will be a part of the activities and the educational programs as well that will be held during the Gala Festival that will not only reach people who quote, live here locally, but for the thousands of people who come to this gathering from across the country. So we are planting seeds that people will now know in other parts of the United States that Reconstruction Era Monument is here. You know, you mentioned um, the Gullah Festival and actually um, uh, having adopted that theme and everything. Uh, I had a young lady uh, three weeks ago who uh, was on this same program, and we talked about the importance of uh, actually uh, the thousands of people who will come to Beaufort and, and actually be a part of the Gullah Festival. It is really an opportunity for us to actually engage uh, other people who are not from Buford, as you said earlier. But but I think it is, it is a, a matter of education. Uh, America needs to be educated uh, pertaining to American history because I contend and I understand uh, your position and the things that you can say publicly uh, but I'm not restricted to. <laughs> but but I, I am absolutely convinced that one of the greatest travesties that has um, uh, been uh, committed in America is the absence of the facts of what took place during the era of Reconstruction. Uh, because I, I am equally convinced that it has been purposely withheld from America, if you will. And, and I think it is high time that we actually engage and just tell the truth and give uh, you know, all of America and the world, really, uh, the truth about our nation, which is, in my opinion, the greatest nation upon the face of this earth. But it is not a perfect nation, if you will. We are still trying to form a more perfect, perfect union. Yeah. And that's true, you mentioned that. The, the Second Century Commission, which prepared the Park Service for its 100th anniversary and following, they did a report re revisiting that. And they said that we need to do three things in the Park Service. Tell the history boldly, truthfully, and accurately. And some of these parks that we're seeing is telling the whole American story. Cesar Chavez, Harriet Tubman, Manzanar. And let me just explain, Manzanar is a um, Japanese internment camp during World War II. Cesar Chavez and the American United Workers and you know, um, Hispanic or Mexican Americans. Harriet Tubman, women. So, and now Reconstruction. Um, so the Park Service recognized that we need to tell these stories to be more inclusive of our American history because it is American history. So we are aware of that, that we need to um, be more inclusive in the stories that we tell um, throughout the country. And 
national parks what we call America's best idea and national parks also are classrooms where people come to learn about our history so we do agree that we need to be more complete in telling the whole American history story and plus we have to be patient um, it was 17 years ago from a public perspective that this conversation actually saw the light of day um, when the Secretary of the Interior um, at that time, Bruce Babbitt, in the latter days of President Clinton's administration, actually uh, came here uh, to Buford. And, and he and Dr. Eric Foner, who's probably America's premier historian on the era of Reconstruction, in a very simple, clear voice said, you know, this is a place where a conversation needs to be held about Reconstruction. Now, mind you, that was in December of 2000. I was there, so I know it was in December of 2000. And it wasn't until the afternoon of January 12th, you know, 2017, that that became a reality. Now, in that 17 years, we had some starts, some starts, some ups, some downs, some headaches. But we were methodical in the process of believing that Reconstruction Era National Monument was just not only needed by the folks here in Buford, but it is needed by the nation. I do understand why you have survived in the Park Service since for 37 years as you are one of the most tactful people that I have had the, the privilege to meet. Uh, and what you, the long and short of what you're saying is, is it was a great idea and two uh, the great people, Mr. Babbitt, uh, you know, along with the Clinton administration, really did see the need 17 years ago to do what is happening now. Right. But because of the powers to be who objected to it and did all the roadblocks and everything, uh, it did not happen until we changed uh, uh, administrations and all those things, which again uh, uh, bespeaks um, the the the. The, uh, the obstacles that still exist in being able to tell the American sto story boldly, if you will, uh, because uh, there are many people who really don't uh, see the bold part. They see the bold part as, I, I think the, the phrase was uh, mentioned, as um, this is a revisionist history if you will. It's not being revised. It's just being told. It's that part that has not been told because of those obstacles uh, back from 17 years ago. Right. Would you say, and I should not ask you, would you say, well, but I, I, I'll just I'll put it in this, your comments. I'll put it in this context. Um, we began this journey, as I said, in, in 2000 with good folks, good citizens here in the Beaufort County area. Um, it was, this is common, not political reasons why the National Park Service was told to stop this from outside forces um, exerted on, at that time, the congressman from this area. But there were members, like myself and others, in the Park Service knew that the day would come, the day would come that, that we would, would take this up and, and begin anew to, to address this. And when that day came, we were ready, we were, we were prepared. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would have been, but we persevered, dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, and we allowed it to happen and to, to be placed on the president's desk where it came to light. And I think for me, it was an opportunity to be a part of history. You know, I've done a lot of things in the agency in my 37 years, but never done something directly to the point that it became, you know, this part of our, our American experience. So. We have no choice but to sally forth, as they would say in the Civil War, because of what we've done thus far. And it was the plan. Um, when we got to the Civil War, we were saying we came with what we call what the previous director Jarvis a call to action. And part of that Civil War to Civil Rights, it was always a goal in the action plan to have a Reconstruction Era site in the South. We do have a one that came with the Homestead, which is Nicodemus National Historic Site. But that came with the Homestead Act a little later on. So it was our goal. And um, as Michael said, it was the right time. We always knew we had to have it, but we knew that to do the 150 of the Civil War and to do the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Movement, we had to bring in Reconstruction. So I hate to say the stars aligned. <laughs> 
But they really did. Yeah. It, it, with the 150 and the 50th, and we were coming up to our 100th anniversary of the Park Service, and uh, with the administration who want to be more inclusive, we were able to put it in there. And I, I'll be honest with you, for the past 10 years, was not 10, eight years, we knew it was coming. We just didn't know when. Yeah. And I'm giving that from a regional uh, point. That was part of the, our, our, our action. And again, I, I must pause to congratulate you all, all of you, on a job well done. Because I think through this process, we, we need to continue to acknowledge the hard work that has been done and, and, and the many obstacles that you all have overcome because you know, in your business, as good as your intentions are in your business, uh, one person in the political realm can stifle even the best uh, efforts. And, 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 and so you have navigated that all well. And, and I, uh, I commend you all because it, it, it requires people like yourselves to actually be relentless in trying to put forward uh, the truth if you will understanding that uh, always that you don't make the final decisions and they are political uh, you know for the most part but it's it's just a great thing the the, the one thing that has has bothered me and and you can uh, you know jump in on this if you will uh, I, for those people who held this up for about uh, 17 or so years, uh, you know, in the process, I, 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 I hasten to say that my belief is, is that if you were uh, proposing to do a Confederate monument, that you would not have had any problems whatsoever uh, and that it would have been, you know, readily approved. And, and I believe we ought to be honoring uh, everyone, whether they were of the same belief uh, that I have or not. I think we ought to uh, recognize and honor uh, those people who um, have been a part of the American dream and this great country in which we live. And so I, I just find it perplexing to know that we have so many Civil War uh, monuments and and, and 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 things that that we go around and we we can look at and learn from, and uh, and now just uh, this year we have our first one from Reconstruction. That those are the uh, disparities I think that um, we uh, are faced with in that. I think it is important for our youth to know, uh, irrespective of their ethnic backgrounds and or positions, I think all children, black children, brown children, uh, Caucasians, and, and children of other persuasion, ought to know the entire American story, if you will. Right, right. And so we thank you all for your perseverance in your uh, uh, ever uh, you know willingness to go forth and do the right thing if you will we thank you for, well, thank you for having us again and we look forward to future conversations there is uh, you, you talked about uh, there was going to be uh, books that were available and and you put one before me called the reconstruction era now, I don't know uh, anything that's in it but I I just glancing through, through it, <coughs> I'm, I'm looking and I, I'm, I'm seeing all these, uh, the, 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 the different subjects. chapters and, and the subjects. And uh, one of them caught my um, attention. It says, from slavery to free labor in the South. Uh, not having read the book, I just, uh, it just caught my uh, interest because I am from the South. Mm -hmm. I am a son of the South, if you right. will. Have gone different places, and and now I'm back in the South. But I, I uh, remember 
uh, the sharecroppers and yes. all of those things. And, and I don't know whether in That's the book. That's the subject matter. Is that the yes, subject matter? subject matter. Uh, yes. So for those who have never heard about sharecropping, if you will, uh, to just give us a little, a little snapshot of what might be uh, in the book because I want to get one. I thought you had brought this one for me <laughs> and uh, you let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you let me know that this Up was front. not he for did, me. Did, did. Well, and, and you said that I, Melissa. Pastor, was I would have given you that one, but that's signed by the premier historian Eric, Doctor Eric Foner. So I need to keep that, sir. Oh, in other words, <laughs> yeah. I don't rate. Well, no, <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> you keep yourself. You I'm just gonna smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you got to be the assistant or, or the, the uh, superintendent. <laughs> Yeah, acting superintendent. <laughs> yes. But, but Melissa will make sure you get a copy. Yes, I will. And also a copy of our brochure that has been done so as well on the part. He's putting me on spot, has to get We'll work that out. He, he, he is so tactful. And he, he, knows how, yes, he, is. he knows how to redirect the matter. Him talk. <laughs> so, so now he's going to tell us about sharecropping. Right. I, I, I will come from a historical perspective. And what I saw as a child. Talked about that today. Didn't yeah, we? I talked about that today. Um, I, let's use Buford as as a landscape. Um, you know, fortunate enough for Buford in the fall of 1861, when Union forces attacked, you know, the Buford Hilton Head area, there was a transition that took place here, and that transition basically is that man, most of the white owners of the plantations left. And I, I, I was speaking at a public event this weekend. I said, now that's the first connotation of a sanctuary community in American history, where now people were in this area without, without the bonds of slavery. And without Twitter, without Facebook, without Messenger, other African Americans who were enslaved from the surrounding Colleton County or Bamberg County or Jasper County, whatever, also found themselves in Buford. So there were tens of thousands of African Americans, formerly enslaved individuals, in the sanctuary community of Buford County. You, you know, uh, you are just so full of information. 90% of those of us who live in Buford County, I contend, have never heard what you just said. Uh, 90%. It, it was only some years ago that I realized that in 1861 that the black slaves were actually left to themselves in, in, in a large way mm -hmm. and really had to come out of slavery into in great part governing themselves, yes. if, if you will. And so... I, 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 please forgive me for interrupting you. Oh, no you. problem, not at all, sir. But, but, but I am just so, I am so excited and to hear someone uh, espouse that who we know, no history is just, I think, uh, the, is a jewel, if you will. And so, if you will continue. <laughs> yes. Thank you, counselor. Please. <laughs> but it, it is, it is uh, it's just amazing. And that is why anytime you're here, you, I want you to come and we are going to expose this because I think it's so important. I, I get emotional about it and, and, and sometimes I even cry because our people have been deprived and we have bought into this lie uh, in, in so many ways that, well, you know, uh, we're not so smart and we, we didn't, uh, but so I won't change the subject. Yes, sir. You're really on it. You're on a roll. So please forgive me. Oh, no problem. Not at all, sir. That was a station break. <laughs> so, so now you have this sanctuary community of Buford and the seeds of reconstruction are born in the sanctuary community. You have the US military, you have Northern white missionaries, we have other folks coming in now and, and bringing the transition from enslavement to freedom. And then your challenge, what do we call these people? Are they still enslaved? Are they contraband? Are they free? Can we pay them? Should they work for free? Can they join the military or should they be excluded? Can they help the military? 
or should we just send them along somehow with their former masters? So that's the that's the, the challenge that Beaufort County brought to this nation. And that's why Reconstruction Era National Monument is in Beaufort County today. Now, when we fast forward, as we begin to see the ending of Reconstruction and what's called redemption, that's when many of the white owners, uh, white politicians who some were in charge or in control pre-Civil War came back, okay? And so now you have this free population of African-Americans that are there, but the lands that they once had, they enjoyed. Now the owners say, this is ours, this is mine, but you can stay if you crop the land, if you share the crops with me and you don't have to pay, but your work will be taken care of or your labor will be taken care of by you staying and paying. So that's where you get the term share cropping. And so through the, the rest of the, the 19th century, through parts of the 20th century, folks were living on the land of predominantly white owners, growing crops, and, and, and those crops became their hire for them to live there. And so as a child in Williamsburg County, I knew people who lived on white folks' land, white people land, owners, in a sharecropping perspective. This is not 1870 now, this is in the 1970s. Absolutely. That I, I saw this, and you know, I didn't understand the dichotomy of it until I had a chance to read history, that this was a pattern that had been put in place post-Reconstruction in many respects to, to it can be seen as a semblance of, of, of slavery in, in some respects, because what my relatives said, I don't know about her relatives, our folks left by night from sharecropping situations to Philadelphia, to Washington, to New York, in order to really seek the freedom that they were looking for. But those who didn't have the capacity to leave, that's where we get the great migration, that's a whole other subject matter, sir, for another time, um, were still left in this type of semi-bonded situation. So when you talk about sharecropping, Yes, that was a part of, of life. That's a part of our history. Many Americans went through that and experienced that. Most, whether we were from South Carolina or Georgia, uh, Tennessee, any of the southern states, yeah. most of our family members experienced somewhat of the same thing. My grandfather uh, bought a farm in 1952. And so we didn't experience that, but all around us, you saw the best. We, we, we saw it. We we absolutely saw it. And, and in Georgia, uh, the the lie was that not only did you get to live on the property, but it was put forth as uh, okay, uh, the landowner would buy the fertilizer, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you provided, the blacks provided the labor. Yeah, right. And so then at the end, he would uh, figure, if you will, yeah, right. how much was produced and, and what all the cost was. Right. And then if there were anything left over, then the, uh, he was supposed to go 50% of whatever uh, was was. May, oh, I tell you, so my history with, is with right. his own money, a little chip. <laughs> yes, yes. And so yeah. any time during the, the year, the th that is exactly right. So during the year, any time uh, you needed anything, you just went down to the green book, and it was put on your account. <laughs> right. So the the reality of all of it was is that in the end, you've got the same person who's doing the transactions is doing the figuring yeah. who owns the store yeah. and so therefore nobody ever really made any money right. uh, it was just that free labor right. uh, you after slavery almost right. And, right. and so uh, it, it really is it, it is powerful yeah. that we can stand here today sit here today and actually discuss right. the details of it and it will hopefully uh, reach the ears of people who have never heard it before 
and never understood why it was that the great migration yes. actually took place. Yes. Is it wasn't because uh, you you love know, our family members <laughs> yeah, love New York and DC and, and all those places. Yeah, but but it was to escape, yeah. if you will, uh, uh, yeah. those and make money. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and now we have direct lines where we can articulate this. Whether you're from the Upper South, which would folks fled to Washington or to Baltimore right. or to Philadelphia, to New York, um, in the more mid South, folk went to Detroit or Chicago, and folks in the further West went out 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 to California. Those lines are clear. But if we don't have these discussions to our family union, we don't know why our family lives where they live today. A absolutely. And, and that's what we want to do. We want to get the information out so our family reunions can be enriched, if yes. you will. And people can start feeling proud about who we are and, yeah. and why we are where we are. Right. And all of those things, I, I think, so will yeah. make all the difference in the world. I, I contend and I, I truly believe and I teach in our church that um, one of the reasons we have the problems that we have in our uh, ethnic group is because we don't know who we are and, and, and we don't have an understanding and a grasp of the strength of our foreparents and what they endured and how they were really, really people who, who uh, had great promise uh, because they never allowed uh, circumstances. their okay. circumstances and intellect. to get them When they them came down. to Africa, they didn't just grab anyone. They grabbed artisans. They grabbed skilled labor. They, they grabbed people, you know, they, farmers and blacksmiths and all those different people to come and raise these crops that we eat that are traditionally African. So it wasn't, you know, we came from kings and queens and we brought that here to the America and we helped as other Americans build this country. And they, you, you, you got it. They, they not only raised those crops, <laughs> but they built these southern mansions and yeah. they, they laid out and they worked on and they built the White House and all yeah. the yeah. other houses yeah. and, and yeah. everything. Very much and, so. and so if our young people just realize that, yeah. I think our intellect would be promoted, if you will, and we yeah. would realize how it is that we really still can learn anything, if you will. Yeah. Uh, you own the subject that is so near and dear <laughs> to my heart, and, and I just think you all bring uh, so much value, and it is so invaluable what you are doing, uh, that you have an open door to 94.5. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We really do appreciate well, we that. We appreciate that. Thank you, sir. And so with that, I, I will say that we are going to come to a close. We, we have been blessed to have uh, Mrs. Melissa English Reyes mm -hmm. uh, with us, who is the acting superintendent of the Reconstruction Era National Monument. And uh, I, I think he is an old friend now, yeah. Mr. Mike Allen, <laughs> who this is his second time with us, who is the community partnership um, specialist, uh, if you will, uh, for this project. And uh, they all are employed by the National Park Services. And so we just thank you all for being here with us. And we just ask you if you would promise that whenever you're back in the area, stop by. Certainly will. Thank you for having us. God thank bless you. you. Have a blessed day. Thank you for joining us for Community Corner on 94.5 Praise. And don't forget to join us every Thursday at 7 o'clock for the latest in community programs and highlights. If you want more information on today's topic or guests, you can find it on our website at praise945.com. May the peace and blessings of the Lord be yours.